All right. Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to the next session. We're, we're getting very late on the Sunday now, and it's, everyone's getting a little bit frazzled, and of course, looking forward to lightning talks and maybe a beverage at the end of the day. But uh, we've got a, a couple more things to do. So um, I'd like to welcome Greg Hahn to talk about Python versus Punch Out. Greg is a Python enthusiast who lives in Sydney. His interests include AI, home automation, and data science. When he's not trying to build his own personal HAL, he plays board games and competes in trivia. He does not do Python for a living, so please be kind to him. Please welcome Greg. Thank you much. Got to start my timer here so I don't go over. Uh, so I'll start off by saying a little bit about me. Um, I've been a Python enthusiast here for about five years. Uh, I'm actually not a programmer by trade. Um, so uh, if you expect the sort of level of questions, I won't be able to answer them. Uh, but this is my first time speaking at PyCon. And I'm not sure why the screen is vibrating, but uh, <laughs> that'll, uh, that'll be an interesting uh, part of the presentation there. All right. So uh, game punch out. Uh, who here knows this game or has played this game? Please raise your hand. OK, good. About a third of you, it looks like. Um, this game was, uh, it was made for the Nintendo Entertainment System in the 80s. Uh, it was immensely popular, at least uh, when I was growing up. Um, basically, the game is two boxers enter the ring, and one tries to knock the other out. Uh, you can win by either knocking the other guy down three times in a round. There are three rounds. Or knocking him down, and he just doesn't get back up. Um, you control the player at the bottom of the screen. Um, his name is Little Mac. And the character that you see here is, uh, he goes by the name of uh, Mr. Dream uh, in th the version that you see here. And uh, if you're from North America like I am, he is actually Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. They uh, licensed his uh, name and likeness. So uh, if you seem a little confused by that screen right now and say, who's that, then that's why. Um, Let's see. So one of the things that sort of uh, bothered me was uh, that I never beat the game. Um, I uh, was a little uh, 8 to 10 year old and um, played till my fingers got callous, was never able to beat it. So I was wondering as an adult, would it be possible to uh, create an AI for Python, for Python that could beat the most difficult opponent? And if not, was there one that could be just better than me uh, for however you want to measure better than me? Um, let's see. So uh, the way that um, I decided to approach this was this, uh, there was this new um, paper written about NEAT, which is the neuroevolution of augmenting topologies. Uh, it's described as a genetic algorithm for the general generation of evolving artificial neural networks. And it was developed by a guy named Ken Stanley. Uh, is there a module for neat Python? Of course there's a module for neat Python. Uh, I, I felt like I didn't even have to look. So uh, this may be old for some people, but um, just as a review, uh, the basic unit of a, uh, of a artificial neural network is uh, the perceptron. What it basically does is it takes uh, inputs and multiplies them by weights, adds them up, and if it's greater than a threshold, it sets it to, its output to a high value, and if it's below a certain threshold, it sets it to a low value. Uh, the, the function that does that uh, is called the aggregating function. Um, that's just a quick review. So in a standard artificial neural network, what basically happens is uh, give it inputs, there's a hidden layer that adds up some things via weights, applies the aggregating function. Then there's an output layer that takes the hidden layer, adds up some weights, uh, inputs via weights, and then gives an output. Uh, what happens then is that you see an error in your outputs, and then you use that error to backpropagate, push the data backwards to see what your weights should be um, based on that error. Um, but this has some significant drawbacks. Um, they don't handle things over time very well because uh, you can set them up as recurrent, which means that you have to set up more than one hidden layer, and it's very memory intensive. 
Another problem that can be with it is that it's very starting value dependent. So you don't really know if the weights that you randomly created were any good. Um, and one big problem that you have is how many nodes should you put in the hidden layer? How many hidden layers should you have? Uh, that's not always entirely clear. So, uh, so for how neat works is actually you generate a whole bunch of these artificial neural networks and then you see how they do and you evaluate them and give them a number called fitness. And then you take those ones that have performed well according to the fitness and then you randomly mutate them in one way or another. So you might actually take off um, a weight entirely. You might delete a node, you might add an extra node. Uh, you might slightly change the value of a weight and then you, with that next generation, you evaluate those fitnesses again and see if it got any better. Uh, Python, uh, Neat Python handles all of this and does it in a very configurable way. And you can even change the way you do them on the fly. So if you find that it's not changing fast enough, you can update how much it mutates. Uh, or if you find that it's changing too much and not making any progress, you can change, uh, lower how much it mutates. So how's this gonna work for us? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a whole bunch of info about the game, load it into, load it into our inputs, and then run through the, through the uh, network that we've created and see what it tells us to do. We're gonna do this for each screen. So if that's not entirely clear, uh, here's a visual representation. So imagine that all of these little Macs are along the top are artificial neural networks. So we wanna see how well each of them is at the task that we want them to do. So we run each of them and then we say, okay, maybe the first, second, and third, we wanna hold on to them because they have attributes that had really high fitnesses. So we use those three and change them slightly in different ways to create the next generation. Um, so if you see, like, no, first, second, and third, they all had green shorts as a representation. Um, so almost all of the next generation has green shorts, but not all of them do. The reason for that is, is that we do have to work in some change because we're not entirely convinced that the green shorts is the correct thing that we need to do. Uh, this sort of gets us around some local uh, maxima that we sometimes run into with neural networks is that we have to keep changing on some level and not get stuck in a rut. So at the low level, what is it that we need to do? Well, we need to take a screenshot of our emulator playing this game. We need to isolate key features of the game. The stars in the upper left let you throw really strong punches. You can collect them as you go along. The hearts, if you run out of them because someone's blocked you or you've blocked a punch, then you can't throw punches anymore. You're exhausted, so to speak. There's the enemy health bar, your health bar. Um, you see, uh, I circled there on the right. Um, that's where the referee comes out. Uh, so you need to make sure, is the referee out right now? Uh, is he counting? Is he telling you to start the fight? What's he going to do? And you also have to collect, most importantly, information on the guy that you're facing. Uh, what does he look like? What is he doing you? What is he doing telling you to do right now? Um, once we have all that information, we need to put it in the neural network, see what it spits out for us to do, and then do it. And we have to do it in less than 20 milliseconds because uh, that's how long it's gonna take before the frame's gonna change again. Um, so can Python do all that? Yeah, actually it can. So, but at a higher level, what is it that we need to do? Well, we, we're trying to find which neural network can play this game the best. So we're gonna generate a whole bunch of neural networks play the game with each one, give them fitnesses according to a formula, and then, gen and then once we've figured out how many are good for an arbitrary value of good, uh, we're gonna generate a new set of networks. And we're gonna do that over and over and over and over and over to get better and better and better. Um, the fitness functions. So, this is a very interesting part of this, and I gotta say it was very interesting uh, to write because 
the n numbers, unlike in an, so when I described artificial neural networks, we said that we had to evaluate their error to back propagate. Uh, you don't have to do that uh, with NEAT. Um, the amount of error doesn't really matter. What matters is uh, that they're orderable. So the fact that something is 10 times, has a fitness 10 times higher than another doesn't really matter. What matters is that A is greater than B rather than A is 10 times B. Um, so the fitness functions also, and here's where they're not particularly great for evaluating video games. They should evaluate the neural network as quickly as possible. But video games operate at the speed of humans. So humans make decisions at about 200 milliseconds or so. Um, that's an eternity in computers. So uh, this creates some issues that will bite us down the road. Um, so like I said, the neural networks with the highest fitnesses survived in the next generations. The others we discard. Um, how do we define success? Uh, at first, you might think that that's pretty easy. You win the game, it, it's high. If you don't win the game, it's low. Uh, but that's, that doesn't give enough instruction. Someone doesn't know, well, did I play it sort of well? Uh, did, I, did I punch him enough times? Did um, he ever fall down? You need to give some guidance. And just because you might think that, oh, someone that punched more is better than someone that punched less, your fitness functions will, they're tough to define, and we'll, that will also come back to bite us. So if my, I don't believe in doing live demos because they have always failed me. So I'm doing a live video, not really a live video. Uh, so newly generated uh, neural networks will often do the same thing over and over. So uh, that's actually fine. We, we kind of want to see which things are good for over and over. But I left, I had this running once and left and came back and it was running, the, the generations were finishing way too fast. I couldn't figure out why. So I watched it and here's what was happening. Let's see. So you can see he's punching over and over and over. Okay, that's not particularly interesting. Okay, he seemed to knock him down with just one punch. That doesn't seem very good either. And we just won. Now, this is against the, the uh, first fighter of the game. Uh, and it's actually a very weird quirk that if you punch him at just the right moment, uh, you win, win against this fighter. Uh, because I'd emphasize, well, a win, a win is the best thing of all. So it should have the highest fitness function. So generation after generation was trying to achieve this over and over. Um, which is a little frustrating to come back and find basically trying to do variants of this. Uh, so for the fitness function of this, I had to say, don't allow a single KO as winning because otherwise it will emphasize this particular behavior. Let's see. And I've lost my mouse pointer. There we go. So it also finds bugs. And this is one that was really getting to me. So I once came back from a day of work and the problem wasn't that it was taking, the generations were too short, it's that they were taking too long. Um, the actual in-time game should take about an hour, a minute and a half per round. And remember earlier I said we want to evaluate quickly. And playing for three rounds is just too long. So I said, let's, let's just play for one round. We'll evaluate after one round and we'll just evaluate that and see where we're going. Um, so I come home and the generations are taking way too long, way too long. And then so I watch it and here's why. So watch the upper right hand corner, the timer. So what happened there? Someone say it. The clock stopped. The clock literally stopped. There's a bug in the game. If you do a certain sequence of punches, the clock stops. <laughs> and the game figured out that, well, if you're cutting off my time and the number of rounds I can play, 
it found a way to say, OK, I'll make a round a whole lot longer. <laughs> Which <laughs> I guess is a sort of way of winning. Uh, some might call it cheating, but uh, yeah, it was very interesting. Uh, let's see. So here's the fitness function, sort of simplified for the case. Uh, and I said we talk about this again later. Uh, basically, I give you 10 million points if you win, a million points for each time you knock down your opponent, a uh, thousand points for every difference in level between uh, your energy bar and the opponents, uh, a point for every second that you survive, and I give you two points for a heart you have at the end, and 10 points uh, for every star that you gain along the way. Now, this might seem like, okay, that's pretty straightforward. You're describing it. But this, but this fitness function also says that uh, someone who won in six knockdowns did better than someone who won in three. Is, is that really the case? Um, someone who did it in six knockdowns at least had to go to a second round and uh, had to go to a third, actually. It's not particularly, you can say, well, someone who did it in three actually did it better. Uh, so the fitness function actually can lead to weird behaviors, um, is I guess the point of that one. This is where I show you graphs of the progress uh, over time. Um, unfortunately, I can't do that uh, because I noticed too late that the neural networks themselves are saved to disks, but the statistics are not. Um, so uh, when I got all done, I was so happy. Uh, I go back to look at the statistics, and they're gone. They're gone. Uh, so. It uh, looks like I will be pulling up this and contrib contributing uh, to get this saved to disk. But I can't show you uh, particular stuff. So instead, I'm going to show you what learning looks like. So again, I want to beat the toughest character in the, in the game. His name is Mr. Dream. Um, one thing to know is for the first 90 seconds of playing against him, if he hits you with one punch, you immediately lose. So, let's see what that means. Okay. We're going to dodge a little bit. Oh, we dodged one, and we're down. Okay, so let's try something else. We're going to dodge a bit again. We're going to dodge and punch. Uh, that doesn't work too well either. But we lived a little bit longer. This one, uh, let's just punch like crazy. <laughs> Keep punching, man. Keep pu Oh. That, that's not going to work either. So let's try something else now. Let's dodge. Oh, dodging wasn't timed right. So we have to start again. Now we get some dodging. Oh, we tried to punch after the dodge. That's not a good approach either. Now let's just try to punch him in the gut over and over and over. Let's see if that, if that is a good. Nope, no good. So you can see, so this basically ran on my computer for a very long time. Uh, it's, it's kind of frustrating and uh, interesting to watch because you never really know how it's going to react next. And I've lost my, there we go. So how long did it take the program to get better than me? The answer? 15 minutes. <laughs> I, it's embarrassingly sad. Um, but when you think about it, it's responding to the exact same set of inputs each time. So when you think, oh, I have to actually dodge as a human accurately uh, over and over and over for 90 seconds, oh, that's a bit hard. Where the computer doesn't care. Uh, it just does it over and over. So here's the real question, though. How long? did it take to win the game? Um, the answer is about three days. Uh, I was actually, I, part of me thought it would take, I don't know, a week. Um, three days is actually kind of cool, because uh, you could sort of see it over time. So because I don't have actual results to show you um, over time, here's what you have. So better than human, and human in this case is me. Um, that was just 15 minutes. To just get one knockdown took six hours. Uh, to get three knockdowns is, was about 48 hours. It was that way after two days. 
and then a victory after three days. So if I had to do it again, uh, what would I do differently? Uh, this lends itself to be parallelized much, very easily. Uh, I could have just spun up a bunch of VMs and had it done it on all of these. I didn't. I just ran it on uh, my machine. Uh, I actually ran it in a virtual machine, uh, a Linux virtual machine on my Windows box, so I could let it run while I played other video games. <laughs> um, if I had to do it again, I'd use a more accurate uh, time.sleep and pykeyboard.press. So the issue that I ran into was that every now and then a neural network I would know should perform well wouldn't. And the reason why was because time that sleep is not entirely accurate uh, to the millisecond, certainly not on a Linux box running as a VM inside of a Windows machine. And PyKeyboard.press wasn't 100% accurate either down to the millisecond. So I would say, okay, it's time to hit the dodge key and let it up after this time. And it would take varying amounts of time each time. Usually, I'm guessing because it had to wait for system calls uh, in order to do that. And then someone pointed out to me, uh, this is a puzzle game. It's not actually a fighting game. You're trying to figure out a puzzle. And I'm like, oh, yeah. This is probably not the best approach now that I think about it. But uh, still an interesting one. So based on my time, I'm going to show you the uh, actual results. Um, I don't have the, I'm going to show you the five times speed, only because I don't have time to do the others. Uh, so you can see actually what happens. Let's see if I can get this full screen. So the first minute and a half perfectly dodges and survives all that. Gets a new set of punches, knocked down. Now, round one's over up to this point, haven't taken a single punch. In round two, there are undodgeable punches. You can't do anything about them. Still doing all right. Two knockdowns. Ah, OK, so we recover once more. All right, round three. I don't think you can do it. Yes, you can. I get nervous watching this, even though I know the outcome. <laughs> All right, and that, is that the second? That was, okay, that was the first second. Running out of time, come on, there we go. <laughs> so that's the shortened version of victory. Um, I'm gonna post the link that shows both the, uh, the uh, three times speed and the um, double speed. Sorry, I've gotten out of my presentation here. So again, I'm not a professional coder. And if you look at my code for this, you'll probably say, yes, there's a good reason for that. <laughs> um, but if I can do this, you can do this. Uh, if there is something about the world that interests you, uh, make a project out of it. Uh, that's how I became better at Python. Uh, I once wondered what a map of the world would look like if we did it based on how much flags look like each other. Uh, fun fact, in this world, Australia and New Zealand are still very close to each other. Um, I went to buy, uh, my partner and I went, went to buy a house in Sydney. Um, I know that's kind of crazy to do. Uh, but I wrote a program to look at domain.com.au and see what is the biggest feature of a house and what makes it its uh, value. The answer is actually square meters of the land, um, which might not be immediately obvious. Um, I also am not a big music enthusiast, but Triple J's Hottest 100 is actually huge here. And so I wrote a program to check social media to see uh, who I would think win. And um, I actually got the top three. Uh, of the top 10, I got six of them correct, and one was just out of place. So uh, that was very interesting. If, you, if you're big on math, one of the things I really like to do is uh, check out, I misspelled it here, Project Euler. Project Euler is this website where they'll present you with a math problem like, um, what's the 100th prime that can be written in ascending order? 
like 23 is a prime and it's in ascending order, but 31 isn't. Um, so you write a program to solve it, you put it in there, and it says, great, that's the right answer. Here's a link to a forum where people talk about the pro problem. And in the problem, people usually post their code. And I love looking at the Java ones where the answers are like five pages long. And the Python ones are like three or four lines. And you can just sort of bask in your Python superiority there. <laughs> um, so yeah, if I can do this, you can do this. Um, always challenge yourself to be more learning. And I think that is it. Yes, thank you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, questions? Thank you. You got the knockout. <laughs> uh, hi there. First of all, great talk. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, you uh, didn't make quite clear for all of the um, neural networks, did yeah. you apply back propagation to them as well as the evolution? No. No. Okay, that great. So no that's my second question. Part, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's all done through the evolution. Uh, how did you interface with the game? How do I interface with the game? So uh, that's a good question. It's actually in the code. So I uh, wrote the code to just spawn uh, an emulator and load up the, the ROM. Uh, and then I used Pi Keyboard to interface with the game to reset to the same save, save state that's just before the, the fight starts. So I think F7 was the key. It had to press to start a fight. And then when it came to dodge, I had a dictionary that mapped dodge to left key and uh, punch to B key and all those things. And then just pass that to Pi Keyboard. Question back there. Oh, oh, we're all over the place. Sorry. Who's yeah. next? Um, so when you develop your generation, you said that um, you can't only just pick the best, and you can you have to mix up with something else. What's the something else? Like what what decision do you make to pick the something else? Like do you pick the worst one or the second best one or? So it's not so much mixed with something else, but just change slightly. Yeah. So when you go from one generation to the next, you pick your best and then you change them slightly, or okay. a lot. So you, don't, right. so, you take their at, so you take one of those weights on that neural network, and you might say, I'm going to add a little bit to it, because I think the weight's good, but it might need to be better. Or you might subtract from it, saying, I think lowering the weight is better. Or you might say, I'm going to replace it with a completely different weight entirely. Uh, and that's the random mutations that it does. Uh, to sort, so that it doesn't get caught in, well, it sh this should be moving down because, that, because it, that's what makes my outputs go up. Thank you. Hi. Yeah. Um, how do you determine what values uh, you allocate for the fitness function? Do you guess or do you strategize it somewhat? That, that's a wonderful question. Um, that's, you sort of have to guess and alter them as you go along. Um, so when I started, I just said knockdowns and um, knockdowns and difference in, in enemy, uh, in enemy health versus your health. Uh, but then the game sort of doesn't understand the value of punching because it, uh, and it doesn't understand the value of surviving. So if you don't put that in your uh, fitness function, then it doesn't really understand that that has a value. So everything that you value, everything you put in a good game has to go in there. But what that is isn't always immediately obvious until you start running it. And that's why you run into bugs or cheaters, as it were. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Just following up on that question. Yeah. Uh, it seems that your points that you awarded for different aspects of the fitness function are pretty arbitrary. Yeah. So it seems that it's quite robust. It's not very sensitive to those starting weights in your fitness function. That, that surprises me. Yeah, so uh, perhaps I didn't drive that point very well. But what's so important about the fitness function is that it's orderable, not its scale. So that's why I set 10 million points as a winning, 1 million points for a knockdown. Because if I want to come back and be like, uh, I think something should be inserted in there, I can insert it in there, and I have such a wide gap to work with. But would, um, yeah. would, would the deviation there still change how fast it converges on a good solution? No. Okay. That's a, well, the reason for that is that 
they, all that matters is the order, because we keep X number from each generation who are the best according to the fitness function. Now, if we say that 10 billion points gets you, is worth a win, it will change nothing on that, because 10, because 10 million, 10 billion, 10 trillion, it's still the same, it still falls in the same order. Well, that's, that's really impressive, I think. Yeah, yeah. so because the nice thing about it is that you don't have to know the exact error. You just have to know that one thing is better than the other. But like I said, better than the other isn't always clear either. Just my last question was, what kind of hardware did you, did you run it on? I ran it on my gaming laptop, uh, uh, Asus Republic of Gamers from like four years ago. So not particularly state-of-the-art, but not particularly old stuff either. Thank you. That was a marvelous talk. I've seen that variance of that several times, and that was easily 10 times better than anything I've seen. So thank you oh, so much. Thank you. Um, I understand that the, the pixel, raw pixel data from the various segments on the screen was going straight into the, the first layer. Um, I've seen some cool things done with neural networks. Don't really understand how it works, but you can kind of visualize kind of what the weights do to kind of get an idea of what pixels are important. Did you learn anything about what it was discovering? Like, like was it really understanding what the score was or how much weight did it put on the score versus the, um, the time or something like that? That's stuff I could really easily show you if the statistics module wrote a disk. Sure. <laughs> and unfortunately, it does not. Uh, no. Uh, what, you, what I could tell from looking at it is that what is really, really important is what the enemy is doing right now. Uh, it totally disregards anything like enemy health, your health, heart stars. It's like what's really important is what's in front of me right now, which if you think about it, sort of makes sense. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Um, Everyone else is clapping. I suspect we're slightly, slightly a smidge over time, but I think we'll squeeze one more question in because sure. everyone's so amazed about it. Uh, thanks, that was a lot of fun. Did you try the, your winning um, algorithm on any of the other opponents? Uh, so the first, one, the first opponent is named uh, Glass Joe, and uh, yes, I did eventually win one against him. Uh, weirdly, he takes uh, about four days um, the reason being that it takes so long to evaluate his fitness. Uh, you lose so quickly against Mr. Dream. Yeah, as you saw at the beginning, just one punch and you lose. Uh, whereas the first one gives you a lot of time to work with. So each loop can take uh, three or four minutes, as opposed to losing in three or four seconds. Um, so that is, those are the only two that I tried it on, actually. All right, cool. Thanks, everyone. Um, thank you so much, Craig. That was excellent. Here's yes. your coffee cup. Excellent. Um, <laughs>